All right, we're live. Um, hi guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, happy Sunday, everybody. It's a beautiful day here in New Haven. I spent much of the day out in the sun. Um, thanks so much for checking into our virtual student forum. Uh, my name is Simone, um, and I'm here with Matt and Stephanie. We're all going to introduce ourselves. Um, so I guess. I'll go first. Um, I'm a senior at Yale. I'm originally from New York City. Um, I'm in Davenport College, which is the best residential college at Yale University. Um, uh, I'm an American Studies major, and I do a lot of theater and performing arts here on campus. Um, I do a lot of theater, and I'm in a sketch comedy group. Um, and those, those are kind of like my big things on campus. And I'm excited to answer your questions. Sure. Uh, hi, I'm Stephanie. I'm a junior here at Yale. I'm a political science major. Uh, I'm in Jonathan Edwards College, which is actually the best residential college here at Yale. Um, uh, outside of the classroom, I'm the editor-in-chief of the Yale Daily News, so I spend a lot of time um, kind of doing journalism. Uh, I'm also part of Yale Faith in Action, so a religious community on campus. Um, and I'm happy to answer any of the questions that you might have. Great. My name is Matt. I'm from Ordell, New Jersey. I'm a freshman in Berkeley College, so I don't know what these guys are saying, but Berkeley is the best college. Um, so any questions you guys have about um, STEM here at Yale? I'm also a pre-med student, so I'd be happy to answer those as well. Um, anything about research opportunities, um, I can also take those. So uh, great to meet everyone. Yeah, um, and so just so you guys know how to ask us questions, um, there's a the uh, Q&A app or through the YouTube comments on our YouTube video um, or through the Facebook uh, chat box. You guys can just ask us whatever your questions are. So our first question just came in um, for me. Cool. Um, do a lot of students uh, study abroad, and is there funding available for it? So uh, yes, many students study abroad. Um, I actually studied abroad my junior fall, so last fall semester. Um, I was on a program to uh, based in Barcelona, Spain, and I was able to travel um, to lots of different uh, parts of Europe. And the way that uh, funding for it works is any financial aid that you would get uh, for your sort of time at Yale is applied to a study abroad experience. So if you're on financial aid here, you can take that money um, for a semester abroad. And it's, a, it's an amazing decision. I mean, it was one of my favorite experiences at Yale, but I guess not technically at Yale. Um, and it's a really great way to get just kind of a new perspective on like different education systems um, and different kind of ways to learn and cultural experiences. And then it's really cool to then come back to the Yale community with sort of the experiences that you've had um, while taking time off. And I definitely, whether you do it for a semester or a year or a summer, I definitely recommend taking some time abroad in your time at Yale. Yeah, I studied abroad the summer after my freshman year. Uh, I went to Paris and uh, did a language study there. And I think what's incredible about the program that I did, um, and like a lot of other programs, is that they, it was done through Yale. So it was Yale professors um, and mostly Yale students with us, uh, which meant that when we all came back to New Haven afterwards, um, we could continue language study with those same professors and with those same students uh, and really kind of created uh, an awesome bond and made some really strong friendships that I wouldn't have made otherwise. Uh, again, um, financial aid applies to summers. Uh, there's also a lot of fellowships to apply for as well. Uh, and the main thing that funded my trip was the International Summer Award, um, which is a award for students on financial aid to kind of fund a summer program. So there's a lot of uh, ways to get funding. Um, and I, I, I agree with someone. It's one of the best decisions I made here at Yale. Um, some of my closest friends now are people that I kind of met on that uh, study abroad trip, and it really just enriched the educational experience I've had here. Great. Um, this is a great question. Um, obviously, there's a lot of extracurricular um, opportunities here at Yale. So how easy is it to get involved as a freshman? Um, it's extremely easy to get involved in so many different things as a freshman. So when you guys first come to Yale um, in September, there's going to be a big extracurricular bazaar, which is basically going to be held at Payne Whitney Gymnasium, and all the clubs on campus are going to have a poster. They're going to have flyers, and they're going to really try to attract you to join their club because like they love new members um, and it's really easy to get involved with as many or as few as you want. Um, what a lot of freshmen do is put themselves in the email list for a whole bunch of clubs, kind of see what interests them the most and then really um, discover what they're most passionate about and then stick with those. Um, for me personally, um, I do a lot of student government. So the freshman class council was a really fun way for me to get to meet kids from all different colleges. Um, there's two reps from each college so you automatically have like 23 other people. Um, similar to you from each college, um, and you get to do really fun activities for your class. Um, so this was something that I met um, the members from the year before at the fair. I was able to ask them questions, um, and I was able to follow up with them through meals and stuff, um, and just find out as much info as possible. But it's extremely easy, um, and all, all across the board. Yeah, and one thing I'd say too is that you don't have to have any experience coming in to like join the majority of extracurriculars here. Um, 
for example, like even me, like with uh, the Yale Daily News, I had no experience. I had there was no high school newspaper, and they really told me everything that I needed to know. Um, the upperclassmen really. Um, took the opportunity and the extracurricular activities to really teach you uh, and enrich you uh, and provide you opportunities to grow and learn and so uh, that was something that was really kind of shocking to me was that I expected to get here and to have either do the exactly the same things I did in high school or to be kind of turned away from things because I had no experience and I found the exact opposite to be true. Um, and so I would say it's really involved to get involved as a freshman but it's also easy to get involved with something new as a sophomore. Um, even maybe as a junior or senior, um, so there's a lot of opportunities to kind of try new things and kind of explore a range of opportunities. Um, okay, next question. Um, are there any big campus-wide or class events that everyone can participate in? Yes, definitely. Um, I mean, especially as, as a freshman, Yale does a really great job of, like, bringing you into the community, like, re hitting the ground running sort of right from the get-go. Um, the ones that immediately come to mind are, like, there's a huge uh, freshman dinner um, in Commons, which is, like, the, the biggest sort of Hogwarts-style uh, dining hall here at Yale. Um, and it's like this very cool, like fun, fancy events. I remember there were like ice sculptures and things um, my freshman year. And it's a great way that you're like in this amazing sort of dining hall with all of the other um, Yale freshmen. And it's really cool to just be in one space with, with everybody and participate in this really sort of wonderful um, tradition. And a lot of, I mean, Yale has just really awesome kind of fun uh, traditions that get get everybody involved, and I think especially as I said, like freshman year, freshman dinner being one example of them. Um, I'm thinking of things like intramurals, which are like sports uh, on the residential college level that you know anybody can participate in, and you sort of you are on a team for your residential college and competing against the other colleges that really rally college pride and like a healthy spirit of competition. Um, things that get people involved, kind of really from the get go, um, and help build a really strong sense of uh, community here at Yale. Yeah, and freshman class council, like, basically one of our main purposes is to put on fun events for the entire freshman class. So back in October, we did the freshman barbecue, which is just, like, a fun day when we, we got some grills and we basically had, like, a huge class-wide barbecue. I think almost 1,200 people came out to it, which was really great. Um, just yesterday, we had freshman Olympics, which is basically a giant field day. Um, each residential college had its own team. So that's a great example of how, like, each college has, like, a lot of pride, a lot of tradition, and really tries to, like, outdo all the others. Um, so... Uh, Berkeley did pretty well, so I have to be pretty proud of them. But um, it was it was a really great and fun time for everyone who came out. Um, it was really fun to put on as well. So um, definitely a lot of opportunity to get to know kids in your class and really have some fun with um, the class of 2020 next year. Also, just in, and in terms of just like the Yale like Yale College as a whole, we're about to have um, Spring Fling, which is our big like spring yeah. concert. Um, Janelle Monet is headlining; she's awesome. Uh, but that's I mean, it's this amazing day when like the entire school is at this concert um, on uh, old campus, which is right sort of in the middle of campus. It's in the freshman quad and on the green. Um, and it's great because you get to see like all of Yale kind of come together in in one place, and I think that just goes to show that these fun sort of grade and Yale bonding events don't just happen like at the beginning of the year; they're really dispersed uh, throughout. So at any given time and in the academic year, you're never too far from you know a big fun event like that. So cool. So the next question um, is: Do people go to sports events? Um, and so I think the answer is that there's a real range, um, and that. We're definitely not a sports school, which means it's there's no like social obligation to go to every sports game. Um, but they are really, you know, the games are there and happening all the time. If you're really interested in going, and there's a large group of people that do, um, we have a student organization called the Whaling Crew, which kind of rallies students to go to different games. Um, a lot of the games that happen, kind of, on, they happen on campus. You can get free tickets to pretty much all of them, um, which is great and. You know, this, for example, this semester I got to go to a lot of the basketball games, a lot of the hockey games, um, and just kind of be there in support of either friends on the team um, or just kind of go with friends who are interested in seeing the sport. Um, especially when Yale teams do well, it becomes really exciting. So, for example, this year I was able to go to March Madness to see Yale play uh, the first two rounds. Um, and it was amazing not just to see, you know, Yale players that you've seen in classes and seen kind of walking around on the street playing on such a big platform, but also the amount of students and alumni that came out to support them. Um, I was able to go as part of the newspaper, um, sit on the court and take some photographs, which is also a really cool opportunity. Um, but yeah, a lot of people go out. Uh, it's a really kind of exciting um, thing that happens on campus. And we have kind of 35 varsity sports, um, at least. So whatever you are interested in seeing, you can probably see it on campus. Um, 
and either play the sport yourself or just go as a fan and spectate. Yeah, and I mean, the two biggest things that come to mind when I think of, like, Yale sports are, first of all, my freshman year, um, we won the hockey championship, like, our ice hockey team, and that was amazing. I mean, it ended up being Yale versus Quinea Pack, and they are really close to us. So there was this cool, like, New Haven, Connecticut sort of rivalry going on. Um, and, like, my one of my sweet mates' boyfriends was on the team, and, like, there was this, we had this, you know, huge celebratory party afterwards. And I think it's, it's really cool to experience, you know, people that you are friends with or are in classes with or, you know, see walking around campus being these essentially like, pre-professional athletes um, and often doing really well, which is really exciting. And also there's a big rivalry, rivalry between us and Harvard, and we have the Harvard-Yale football game. It's, like, a huge event, and, like, alumni come back for it, and whether it's at Yale or at Harvard, um, it's always, like, a really big celebration, people from the other school always, you know, come and hang out and have a good time, and I think that there's, like, uh, as Steph said, I would say that we're not one of the, like, huge, like, you have to go, every single person is at every sporting event, but that community is definitely there, and, like, there's tailgates and, you know, lots of fun parties surrounding it, too, so you don't have to be a varsity athlete to engage with the community. Mm -hmm. So next question we have, who's the coolest campus visitor you've seen while at Yale? That's a great question. Um, I'm actually going to give two answers to this question. Um, one, because I personally got to meet him. Um, at the law school, um, Stephen Breyer, who's a Supreme Court justice, came and he gave a talk on, it was titled The Law in the World, basically the role of the Supreme Court like in like a global context. Um, and I'm a pre-med student. Um, I do a lot of science here on campus. Um, and that really opened my eyes to like basically law. Like I'd never attended a, a talk even remotely related to um, like government or law before, so that was like a really cool experience. And afterwards, me and my friend got to take a picture with him. We got to talk with him for like at least five minutes just about like the Supreme Court and his like daily like his daily um, like outlook on like what it does, and it was just really remarkable. Um, another thing was a Masters tee I went to. Uh, Ron Darling, who's a uh, former pitcher for the New York Mets. Um, I'm a huge uh, baseball fan. Um, so it was really cool to hear him talk about his experience playing on the Yale baseball team when he was here, as well as as um, a player on the Mets, as well as a broadcaster. Um, he does the World Series. Um, every time I watch the World Series, a lot of times it's, it's his voice. So it was really cool to kind of like um, put like a face to um, like the voice that was here. So that was really pretty remarkable to see. Um, yeah, I mean, there's kind of so many. It's like really hard to like pick one, and that sounds really kind of silly. But um, mm -hmm. I think the one that has been the coolest campus visitor is, and it's maybe like a journalism nerd moment, but um, David Leonhardt, who writes the upshot for the New York Times, um, the other day I walk into the Yale Daily News building and he's just like sitting in the reporter's room um, that we have there, um, just kind of hanging out, and this is like someone that I <laughs> have admired for a very long time and I think is like an amazing journalist, and he's just like, hi, I'm David, I used to hang out here like you do, um, is it okay if, like, if you show me around and talk about things? And that that's just... I mean, it was, like, a very eye-opening moment because I was, like, I know exactly who you are. I know, like, I, like, read your column all the time. Um, and you're just kind of, like, walking around campus and you used to be in my college. And I think that was a really cool moment of just, like, being um, really enlightened to kind of not just what Yale is like now but kind of the people who've come through here in the past. Um, but also to just, you know, speakers I've got to listen to um, – I got to hear Bobby Lopez, who um, wrote all the Frozen music at a Master's T because he was also in my college um, last year, and hearing him like sing live like a song from the like movie um, was just incredible. It was just like one of those things which is like you're sitting there and you know at the moment it's a real once in a lifetime opportunity. So, um, and both of those people were in my college, which is a really great shout out to the residential college uh, community. It lasts a lifetime. So. Um, I would say I'm also mulling them over in my head. Um, my top two, um, very hard to pick just one. So the first was a master's tea. And so master's teas are when uh, residential colleges invite speakers um, to come and speak, you know, in the common room of a residential college, and you get, you know, a tea and coffee and things, and they just kind of sit and talk to you like, you know, adults, and just get to, you get to just kind of like hear their wisdom from whatever field they're in. Um, but there's an author who I love named David Sedaris, who came and did uh, Master C at Davenport, and he's a great sort of comedy writer and a very, I don't know, clever writer. Um, and that was, it was wonderful to, he just came out with a new book, and he was talking about his book, so that was great. Um, but my all-time favorite, I'd have to say, would be um, Jason Alexander, who played uh, George Sanders on uh, Seinfeld, is actually uh, my friend who went to Yale, graduated last year, was in my comedy group, uh, his dad. And so he came and gave a master's tea, and then, like, 
worked with, met up with our my comedy group and um, did like a workshop with us. And it was just like Gabe's dad, but it was also, he's also this amazing comedy actor and it was really crazy to just have him come back and be so excited to, you know, help teach us comedy and work with us. Um, and that was, that was really sort of, sort of uh, wonderful. Um, anyone else? Uh, no, so this next question says, I want to be involved with music and theater at Yale, but I don't want to major in either area. Uh, can I still be involved in performing arts? Um, and so um, I can take this question briefly um, as someone who not only kind of didn't major in music and theater, but also didn't make it my prior, like, main commitment. Um, so getting involved with music and theater is really easy at the beginning of every semester there's kind of opportunities to get involved uh, audition for shows, sign up for particular roles, um, a cappella orchestras, they'll all have auditions um, and so there's a lot of opportunities to kind of begin that process and you definitely don't have to be a major in either area uh, there are classes that supplement those but also you don't have to be majoring in either music or theatre studies to take even upper level classes I've taken um, like upper level classes in, in both and never had to kind of declare as a major or what have you. Um, and so the community is really vibrant. It's full of people from across all majors and I think makes the both communities really diverse. You see um, people who are the lead in musicals like as electrical engineering majors and things like that. Um, and so there's a real range of kind of commitment involved um, and you don't have to make it your entire life at Yale. Um, you can like participate in one or two shows um, over the course of your time here, um, or you can kind of get really involved, major, and have that exact um, kind of that exact vibe that you want as well. So Simone can probably talk better to it. Um, yeah, sorry, I had to relocate. No, okay. um, um, yeah, and so I am not a theater studies major. Um, I'm an American studies major, and I've been able to do um, many shows on campus, I do on average like two a semester, um, and there, but there are people who are sort of involved with theater and the arts to different capacities. Um, some people are always working on a show and some people will do a show their freshman year, dabble in other things, come back to theater at a later point, um, and any sort of level of involvement that you want is, is great. Um, and the same goes for music. I have friends who are part of like the Yale Symphony Orchestra, and that's like their main thing that they do at Yale. But I also know just so many people who are involved in various choirs or a cappella groups to sort of different degrees of like commitment levels. Um, and I think that it's, it's a really flexible part of the community, which is awesome because a lot of people come here and want to be involved but don't necessarily want to make it like their entire Yale lives, and that's perfectly fine. Great. Next question. Uh, what do you think is the best aspect of the residential college system? So just so everyone knows, we have 12 residential colleges here, and the summer before um, you guys get here on campus in September, um, that fall, um, the summer before you'll be um, sorted into um, a residential college. So I would say, um, I'm going to give two answers to this one. I would say the best thing I like about it is the sense of community that it gives you. So Yale's not a huge school. I would say it's a, it's a pretty medium-sized school, um, but it's very easy because of all the opportunities on campus um, to um, like want to have like a smaller community within it and that's really what the residential college system provides. So within your class of 1300 people, within the undergrad community of 5400 or so people, um, you always have your residential college um, which divides that by 12 um, which is just like almost um, like a really small intimate um, group of people who you're always going to live with, you're going to eat a lot of meals with and you're going to be very comfortable with. Um, the other thing I love about it is the advising that it offers. So you're going to have a dean, um, which um, is basically the equivalent of your guidance counselor, who you can go to with questions about your schedule, um, about your daily life here, um, any issues you might be having. Um, they're always available to talk with you. Um, also a freshman advisor is someone, it's a faculty associated with your residential college who basically um, almost like mentor students one-on-one. Um, -on -one. um, most freshman advisors um, have a max of like three students. Um, so a lot of individualized attention for you. Um, and they're usually um, within your field. So um, like I'm a STEM person and my um, advisor is also within STEM. So I um, always bounce off ideas with him, bounce off questions I might have off of him. So the advising and the sense of community are the two things I love about um, Berkeley and all the other residential colleges here. Um, I go next. Um, I think that Yale sort of strikes the perfect balance of feeling like uh, a medium-sized school. It's like those 5,000 undergrads, um, but that can be, that's like a pretty large, sizable um, community, and I think the residential colleges do a really good job of making that feel a lot smaller. You know, like, and like Matt said, you divide that by 12, and you're not suddenly dealing with, especially freshman year, 5,000 people that, um, that you don't 
don't know. Um, and it's be because of things like um, intramural sports and sort of this like healthy competition between the colleges, you get very close communities. Um, and each college is sort of set up so that you're never going to get all of the STEM majors in one college or like the entire basketball team in one college. Everyone's very spread out and it's randomized, but it's done so so that every col college is sort of a microcosm of the larger Yale community. Um, and that lets you interact with people who are both like you and also not like you. Um, and that's really great, especially freshman year, kind of having all of Yale, but on a smaller scale, like right, in your immediate surroundings, um, is, is really great. Yeah, I think for me the best thing about it has been the closeness that you get with um, kind of the other people in your college that you never meet anyway. But uh, for me, too, the thing that I think just really strikes it as different is the closeness that I have with my master and my dean. Um, they're two faculty members that, you know, have, they're not teaching a class, they have, you know, I never have to be worried about the fact that they're going to grade me. I can just go to them and ask them any questions that I need, whether it be personal or uh, academic, and they know the college, like Yale College, back to front. Um, and they kind of are able to just, like, guide the students, um, help, help us all, and I think that that's really just set the experience apart for me because I feel like, you know, I live in the same entryway with my dean because the deans and masses like live in the college um, and so I'll be walking out down to breakfast or lunch and I'll see my dean and we'll like have a conversation and then I'll go into the dining hall and I'll be able to recognize so many people because a lot of people tend to eat in a residential college even if I'm not going in with the intention of meeting someone I'll definitely feel comfortable sitting down with like a group of people that I'll see and I think that that just sets it apart like the others have said striking that balance between like being in a medium like medium large school to kind of getting that sense of closeness um, with others um, so yeah I definitely feel like JE has been uh, Johnson and I was my college has been kind of a real cornerstone of my Yale experience it's always where I can kind of go back to and um, you know feels like home so I enjoy it. <laughs> um, okay, so next question is very relevant to the immediate times right now. Um, can you describe the campus atmosphere around the uh, presidential election season? Um, so Yale is definitely a very politically minded campus, and we have, and that sort of covers all sides of the political spectrum. Um, there's many like political sort of party or groups um, on campus. You've got. Um, like the party of the right, party of the left, Yale College Democrats, Yale College Republicans, the independent, like everything. Um, and it's all sort of under the umbrella of uh, Yale's political union, um, which is uh, basically the umbrella organization in which all these smaller groups kind of fall and they all have meetings and different, and they organize different events. And so I would say that the general atmosphere around the presidential election is just a very like active campus um, and there's people, there's sort of support along all sides but whatever your personal political views are you can definitely um, find them here and I definitely, I think the way that I personally see it most is just like sitting in a dining hall, you know, people are talking about it and people are, um, when you're walking around campus, like people are talking about political issues so as a result during something like election season people are definitely sort of talking about uh, everything that's going on. Um, yeah, and especially as someone working on, like, a campus publication, um, there's definitely a lot of discussion. You know, our opinion pages are flooded every day with kind of different opinions and, you know, different um, perspectives on what's going on across the country. And I think that what's also really interesting is how that translates into in the classroom. And I know the title of this is Learning Outside the Classroom, but something I've actually found to be really interesting is how professors integrate the discussion of the presidential election um, into classes, um, especially as a poli-sci major, it makes it feel like it's all very relevant, what I'm learning, very applicable to what's kind of going on. Um, so yeah, I think that's been really interesting. And you know, there are a lot of different opinions on campus um, and a lot of different understandings of what's going to happen, especially as an international student. I find it really interesting um, being from the UK to kind of watch everything unravel with people who are able to actually explain what's going on uh, has been really interesting. Um, and yeah, I think there's definitely a, there's going to be a lot of interesting stuff happening in November, and I'm actually kind of excited um, for you guys as freshmen um, to kind of see what kind of viewing parties will be happening. There'll be a lot, I'm sure, going on, a lot of canvassing. It'll actually be a really exciting time to be at Yale. So next question, how do you balance your coursework with commitments to student groups and social life? So definitely the way I want to start this answer is by like reinforcing the idea that freshman fall is always about like finding a balance, right? So you're going to have a lot of um, schoolwork that 
it's going to be harder than stuff you've had before. You're going to have a lot of new friends. You're going to have a lot of new commitments to student groups. Um, and obviously finding that balance is very important. So one of the things that's made it really, um, that at least um, my time I've been successful with, is that a lot of the student groups I'm in, um, a lot of the people in them are much of my, cl like, my closest friends. So um, very much like when I go to a meeting, sometimes we'll like, just hang out afterwards, we'll do homework together, and that almost will be like social time for me as well. So I wouldn't put it into separate categories like academics, student groups, social life in three different set categories because there's so much crossover between them. A lot of my friends are in the student groups that I'm in, a lot of my friends are in my classes, and just studying with them can be so much fun. Um, so I would definitely say those three will definitely blend into one another in a very good way. Um, that really lets you to like share all those different aspects of your lives with each other and with other people. So it's been pretty fun overall. Yeah, I mean, I also think you want to talk about like learning outside of the classroom. I think a lot of what you learn in college is just about like how you work and how you study and how like what your personal patterns are. And so I think that everybody's balance of coursework and student groups and sleep and you know eating and all of it, like everybody's balance looks a little bit different. Um, like I know people who like, can only study. Can't, like, can't stay up late. I know people who pull some all-nighters. I think that it's really dependent on like your personal like way that you work and I agree with Matt that a lot of my friends fall into like my comedy group and my theater world but also I'm friends with a lot of people who have other schedules so you kind of see people and make social time in the way that works for you and a lot of I think growing as a college student is like learning what your rhythms and, and patterns are so I would say there isn't really one answer to that um, but I also think that it's something that like, at different points in my Yale life, I've had different answers to. Um, like finals week, I'm spending more time in the library than with my friends. But you know, for the majority of the semester, it's pretty easy to to find a balance depending on how you kind of personally do that. Sure. Um, so this next question um, is, where do students like to hang out? And I think this kind of actually goes off pretty nicely from what Simone was just saying, and that everybody's has a very different experience with this. Um, some people are very focused in the residential college, some people elsewhere. Um, I know for me, I'm fortunate enough that Yale Daily News has its own building, so um, I actually tend to like hang out there, um, do my work there, um, hang out with other people on the newspaper there. Um, and so a lot of, you know, there are some student groups that have like physical spaces, um, there's cultural centers, they have physical spaces, um, there's obviously like residential college common rooms, so um, some athletic teams will have kind of spaces off campus, things like that. So there are some um, like extracurricular activities that have their own physical spaces that um, kind of provide a place to hang out during the day or during the evenings. Um, and so for, for me that's been like a really great bit of kind of what I've been doing so far is like hanging out in spaces where um, I'm also doing my extracurricular activities and things like that. Um, outside of that, um, Yale has about a million coffee shops. Um, as a coffee shop kind of person, um, I think that that's another place where students like to hang out. Um, you can guarantee going into like one of the coffee shops around campus that you'll definitely see other students there working together, hanging out, just getting coffee. Um, and so I'm, I would say kind of in the daytime, um, those are kind of some of the places that students like to hang out. Um, and have definitely been places where I've spent a lot of time outside of my kind of suite. Yeah, and definitely later at night, there's something that each residential college has called the buttery, and that's basically where, basically from like 10 to midnight, you're able to get food. Um, as you do homework, you're able to hang out. Like I know in Berkeley's buttery, there's a pool table, a fool's ball table, there's um, a basketball court, um, all types of different things. And each residential college, their buttery space is even a little different than each other, so they're all really cool. Um, all have different types of food. Um, so it's a really fun time if you're like working on the piece at late at night. Like a lot of the time, I'll meet at the buttery or at a common room, and we'll get to just hang out and like get our work done, but also have fun while we do it. Um, and people have a wide range of places where they hang out, and like Stephanie said, kind of tied a lot of times into what their extracurriculars are. So my roommate, for example, um, he's um, very active in La Casa, which is the Latin American Cultural Center. Um, so he uh, spends a lot of time in, in that space and uh, with a lot of the uh, groups he's in, they're affiliated with that house. So he spends a lot of times with his friends um, in there and they plan events and they put on performances and um, do a lot of really remarkable things there. So uh, it really varies depending on what your extracurricular interests are. Yeah, and just to further explain a little bit about these cultural centers that we're sort of ambiguously mentioning. Um, so Yale has various cultural centers. Um, there's the AFAM House, the Asian American Cultural Center, um, La Casa, uh, which Matt was just talking about, um, the Native American Cultural Center, um, and Slifka, which is um, like 
the Jewish Cultural Center, um, and they're really amazing spaces where people can get involved with various cultural communities, whether or not they personally are like affiliated with that um, community. For example, like every Friday, um, so the Shabbat dinner, and my friends, my freshman suite, and I have been going since freshman year um, to Shabbat dinner, and it's it's just a really fun like place to hang out every Friday. Um, and like La Casa throws amazing parties, and like the, and everybody that everybody's welcome to. So um, there, like each one sort of has their own community and their own vibe. Um, but they're very cool spaces on campus where like just different people can come together and learn about each other's cultures. And I think there is much a place of like education and learning about cultures that you might not personally be a part of, um, but are just curious about. Uh, which I think is it was just like a, the really amazing spaces to kind of meet new people and engage with communities that you might otherwise engage with or might not, and just kind of learn about um, other cultures, which is great. Um, cool. So the next question is, what kind of advising is available for finding summer jobs or preparing for graduate school? Um, so we have our Office of, kind of Careers and Professional Experience um, on campus. So you can always go and see an advisor if you're looking for specific advice kind of relating to uh, med school, law school. I haven't been to ask for that advice, so I can't speak from personal experience. But I can speak from the summer jobs uh, experience. Um, you all kind of connected to the that office has this thing called the Gale Journalism Initiative, uh, which is spearheaded by um, kind of a number of professional journalists who've been kind of at Yale and now teach here. Um, and so they've been really helpful in kind of providing job opportunities, connecting uh, me and other kind of interested journalists in kind of not just internships, but paid internships, uh, providing funding for those if possible. Uh, and so I think what's also great about Yale's advising is that it can be very specific. And so if you know kind of what you're interested in, there's people that you can go to um, either through that specific office or through other kind of special groups that there are on campus. Um, and they'll be not just like, oh, like, apply for this job and see what happens, but, like, let me help you with your resume, let me connect you with this person, get you a personal recommendation. Uh, it's a very personalized process, and, you know, I think also what's been great is that every advisor that I've spoken to has been really receptive of all the different things that I tend to be looking for, uh, especially as an international student. It can sometimes be a little bit more difficult to find, kind of, the right summer job with the right um, visa situation, and so... Um, They've been kind of really receptive to kind of those different needs um, that I've had. And so um, especially kind of preparing for this summer um, when I have a summer job, um, making sure that the job that I ended up getting was one that I not just wanted, but also, you know, it was a paid internship. It was close by. Um, it was able to provide visa support. All of those kind of nuanced things that I was looking for, um, what I was able to get through the advising system. Yeah, and Yale also has a specifically uh, an advising system that's specific for pre-med students. It's called pre-medical advising. Um, they have walk-in hours where you can go in and ask um, the professionals who work there any questions you have about like your pre-med requirements, making sure you're on the right track, um, just general questions about like what types of things medical schools look for, uh, what has made Yale students successful in the past, um, and just like opportunities to make sure um, there's nothing you're missing. Um, so that's been really valuable for me personally. Um, also, I think one of the most valuable resources for advice, whether it's about a summer job or grad school or the upperclassmen on campus, um, and they're always so helpful, especially as a freshman, um, to talk to people who have similar interests with them um, and really like share the things they've done on campus, um, what their goals are, and you'd really be surprised how many kids are going to be just like you um, when you're here, and we'll share similar passions, and we'll really have um, a lot of great things to um, advise you with, so um, that's been really valuable for me. Yeah, and I think going off that, I think it really doesn't even matter what career area you're looking in. Like, as somebody who's interested in the arts, I came here pretty, like, pretty much thinking that whatever, uh, not financially, whatever employment office existed wasn't going to be very helpful to me personally. Um, but there's a whole sort of section of the employment office devoted to careers in the arts. And I think that, like, seeing that and experiencing, you know, on all the help that they've given me with summer jobs or with um, internships has been really incredible. So it's not just for, like, one type of career. So next question, can you be involved with athletics if you aren't a varsity athlete? Definitely. Um, so besides varsity athletics, um, there's club athletics. So there's club running. There's basically every sport you can imagine. There's a club team for. Um, some of them have tryouts um, and are more competitive than others, but some are very low-key, very uh, relaxed, and just a lot of fun. Um, and if you're not at that club level, there's also intramurals, which are so much fun. They're, again, between each residential college. Um, and a um, lot of pride, a lot of uh, competition there. Um, and they're really a fun time. Just like go out with your friends, 
um, play a football game, um, even like water polo. Um, some of my sweet mates have tried. They never played that before, and through IMs they were exposed to it. Um, so it's just a lot of fun. Also, club sports. One really cool thing is that they'll allow you to travel um, to different schools and kind of like across like the northeast and the country um, to really like get to meet kids from other schools and um, play their club team. So tons of opportunities to get involved um, besides varsity athletics. Um, great. So this question says, what options are there for writers? Do you have to major in English to write for any publications? Um, so options for writers are very vast here at Yale. Um, obviously, I'm going to be biased and say that you know everybody should write for the Yale Daily News, but I know that that's not the only option. Uh, there's about 20, 29, 30 publications on campus. Um, some of them are kind of like the Yale Daily News, where it's like kind of reporting on stuff that's going on on campus. Others are more... Um, nuance. So there's a magazine um, that is specifically talking about kind of issues going on across the globe called The Globalist. We have something called The Politic, which is about politics. Uh, we have uh, Down Magazine, which was, is for primarily written by students of color. We have um, a magazine called Broad Recognition, which is like a feminist magazine. There are like so many, so many options. Um, and it's really about maybe finding what you're most interested in doing, whether it's kind of short daily reporting, whether it's longer feature articles, whether it's something that's kind of talking about like a specific issue, or whether it's kind of more general. There's that. There's also options for like, if you're interested in like fiction writing, um, there's kind of publications that will allow you to print that as well. Um, I could go on forever listing them because there really is just so many options and you really don't have to be majoring in English um, to write for any of these publications. Um, as I said, like early on, I had no writing, real writing experience before coming to Yale um, and managed to be kind of writing with the Yale Daily News very frequently. Um, and, you know, just had a lot of opportunities to kind of learn from upperclassmen. Um, there is like a creative writing concentration if you're interested in it, um, in kind of getting a more formal education um, through the classroom. But um, frankly, a lot of the people who are like leading these publications, uh, majoring across the board in all different kinds of things. So lots of opportunities um, and really to like a real range of opportunities um, as well. Yeah, and I think just to piggyback off of that, I think a key thing to take away from what Steph said is that, um, and this goes for, you know, writing opportunities, but also with really any opportunities, Opportunities. What you major in here does not at all have to be related to your extracurriculars, and I think that um, that's something that I definitely didn't realize before coming to college. I thought your major really dictated uh, what you did on campus, and it can definitely like dictate the classes you take to a certain extent. But in terms of extracurricular opportunities, um, Yale is amazing in that there are people who are involved in so many different things, or just even things that have nothing to do with their academic interests per se, um, and they're not majoring in a, one thing or another doesn't hinder them from sort of signing up. Like one, personally, I was involved with an organization called Squash Haven for um, many years. Oh, sorry, hold on. It's getting a little loud where I am. Here, Steph, do you want to take this one for a second while I make myself quiet? Sure. So the question is about uh, students involved with community service or social activism. Um, so, yeah, so we have um, a place on campus called Dwight Hall, which is a kind of umbrella organization for all of the community service that happens on campus. There's about 90 to 100 different groups that you can get involved with. Um, you can get involved kind of formally, um, kind of getting, kind of working through those organizations. But I think the one thing that is really true is that a lot of the organizations on campus really are service-minded, whether or not they appear so on the surface. And so, actually, like on Friday, I, um, with some other of the Yale Daily News editors, was doing a class for high school students um, who are interested in journalism. I think that that's something that happens very frequently, is even, you know, no matter what you're doing, kind of, if you're in a singing group, a music group, um, going into schools, going and singing in kind of other places, I know that there's um, an acapella group on campus that like goes to sing in prisons and um, kind of to serve the, those communities. And so um, consider that there is like formal community service that you can get involved with, but also that a lot of just the way that a lot of Yaleys are will like drive them to do community service in whatever organization they're a part of. And so um, doing things like teaching journalism classes to high school kids is something that we as the Daily News do naturally and try to do as just part of what we do on campus. Um, and so that's just something to bear in mind. Um, but I think, Simone, you've like done more 
Like home. Yeah, so I, what I was going to say was that I was um, and, and am involved with an organization called Squash Haven, which basically I'm um, partners with New Haven Public Schools, and we, it's like a tutoring service, um, but we also like play squash with the kids, and we've, we talk a lot about like the studies and uh, the correlational studies between physical activity and just general mental well-being and mental health and like how, you know, active, like a kid being active um, can make them really do a lot better in school. Um, and it's really great because I think Yale and New Haven have like a very cool relationship where um, Yale students like are very you know socially activist minded and really want to help out and um, Yale really engages with New Haven in a lot of awesome ways, especially the things like community service and, and tutoring programs. Um, and I have many friends who volunteer in different capacities within New Haven, whether it's soup kitchens or at elementary schools. Um, and there's, so uh, Dwight Hall is the sort of umbrella community service organization here at Yale, and they can pair you with essentially any service uh, opportunity that you are, are looking for. Um, and there's a whole list of organizations that you know Yale has historically partnered with. But another great thing is that if you, on your own volition, sort of do your own research and find an organization that you want to work with, um, if you approach the, you know the Dwight Hall people um, with you know a group of people who are interested in working for or helping out with this organization, they'll make it happen and they'll kind of give you the means by which to to help. And I think that um, as I said, like Yale is a very you know community minded uh, space and it's full of students who really want to help you know the people immediately around them. And so I think that any it lets you really take the initiative to kind of find your own find the ways in which that you want to help, whether that's tutoring or soup kitchen or you know sort of anything to to that extent. So yes, definitely those opportunities very much exist here. Yeah. So great, next question. Um, can STEM majors still have a social life and do STEM majors <laughs> hang out with non-STEM majors? So yes, STEM majors definitely do have social lives and they definitely do hang out with non-STEM majors. Um, so I think one of the most important things um, when you pick a schedule is to have a balance in it. So first semester I took chemistry um, and math, but I also took um, a, a global affairs course and an English course. And for me, that was really important to have a balance of humanities and STEM. Um, I also have friends who take like three out of, out of their four classes are STEM or four out of their five classes are STEM related and they are still are able to um, have tons of time for extracurriculars and to hang out. Um, I would say in general, um, some classes obviously are harder than others, but um, especially the experience I've seen with people as freshmen, um, no one's schedule is so overwhelmingly difficult, even within STEM, that they don't have time for other things. Everyone has time and makes and finds time for their friends and for extracurriculars. So if you're a STEM major, um, you don't have to worry um, about um, being too busy because you will have the same amount of time and freedom to explore other things as any non-STEM major. Um, and also just in terms of hanging out and being surrounded with non-STEM majors, that's one of the cool things about the residential college system is that when I eat dinner each day, I'm surrounded by an English major, um, a theater major, and a poli-sci major. Um, it's not just bio majors or it's not just um, like econ majors. Um, it's, it's, a, it's very diverse, um, not only like culturally but also academically, and that's what's so great about um, life here at Yale. Um, and yeah, so definitely no worries. If you're a STEM major, um, it'll be manageable. Also, I think an important note to attach to that is that um, Yale encourages everybody to sort of explore academically. So as long, in addition to whatever your major is, you'll also have distribution requirements, which are you know everybody has to take a certain number of humanities courses and social science courses and hard science courses and math courses, etc. Um, and so this really encourages you to explore classes outside of your, maybe your primary academic interest. And so for that reason, like I'm very humanities based. But all of my STEM friends, whenever I'm taking a science class, I'm like, guys, this is your stuff. Can you like, you know how to do this? Help me with this. Um, and it's it's really like great to see people really lean on each other academically here. And I think that also speaks to like the academic culture here at Yale is very much a collaborative, cooperative one rather than a competitive one. Um, and everybody has such unique interests that using the people, you know, having the people around you help you and to, you know, lean on them for their support um, is huge. So in that capacity, like my STEM major friends definitely have like helped me out with some classes and I've helped people out with English. You know, it's sort of, it's a very like pay it forward kind of um, mentality here. Um, so yeah, and so just to, to kind of wrap up, um, we're going to each, I guess, answer the age-old question of why did you choose Yale? Um, and I think that everybody obviously has their own unique individualized answer to this. Uh, for me personally, I want, knew that I wanted a strong drama program as well as in conjunction with strong academics. Um, and so Yale, you know, on paper seemed like a perfect option. But then I came to visit campus and it what totally sold me were the people. Um, and everybody says that, but 
the people, I've never seen a school where people here were so excited to be here. And I came for the uh, multicultural open house, what we affectionately call MO, um, when I was a prospective student. And I met all these like amazingly diverse students. And everybody was saying, come to Yale, come to Yale. And people were coming up to me, a prospective student who, you know, they didn't know me. They had no reason to try to win me over. They were just sort of gushing about how much they all loved Yale. And I and I remember uh, I walked up to a girl and sort of asked her just, like, what her favorite classes were. And she kind of took me under her wing and, like, walked. And I walked around with her for a couple hours. And she introduced me to, like, a ton of her friends and told me about her life here. And I've never met, I never experienced a community with just, like, Un such unconditionally open arms and I think now being on the other side of that I think it's so true every time I see prospective students walking around campus I try to get them excited about Yale and tell them why I love Yale and I think that you'll find that Yale is a space where like people love being here and are very grateful and humbled by the experience but also just everyone here is so passionate about their thing that you combine all those together you get this like incredible salad bowl of just Diverse diversity and sort of across all spectrums, um, but just compassion and and passion about being at this being at the school. So, yeah, I would completely agree with that. I think that the reason why I chose Yale is, um, and it's really been kind of lived out in my experience, is that the people here are really all pursuing incredible things. And I think that what's really it's kind of bizarre to imagine, but like I've lived with people who you know. You know, last year I lived with a girl who, like, built, like, a radio in her room because she's, like, an electrical engineering major, and that was a final project, and she, like, brought it out to show us, and I was like, I cannot believe you just built a radio. <laughs> um, and everybody here has their thing that they're so passionate about and they care so much about, um, but by not, but in doing that, they're not competing with someone else. And, you know, students here are found to be incredibly humble and incredibly just giving um, of their time and of their energy and just really wanting to kind of share with you um, not just kind of what they're interested in but like everything else that comes with that like I'll be sitting in class with someone and having like a heated debate um, about kind of the in-depth works of this political theory and then we're leaving the classroom and talking about like how we feel about House of Cards and then we're kind of like going and like watching um, some random show um, on Netflix and going to a comedy show later that night and just laughing uh, incredibly together. And I think that that's what makes Yale so unique is that you have all of these experiences tied into one. And I've, um, like Simone said, everybody's just so happy to be here. Everybody gushes how much about they love Yale. Um, and kind of, for those of you that come to Bulldog Days, um, you'll definitely see that. People just like gushing over and over again about how much they love it here. Um, and it's hard to maybe understand what that feels like so I guess you should just like come and then you'll like know what it feels like um, but yeah I think that you know students here are happy and passionate and interesting and caring and um, I've had like the best three years so I don't regret my decision at all. And to add on to both of those answers um, as a pre-med student I wanted to go to a school where um, I would not be stressed for four years because pre-med requirements can be hard they can be stressful um, but ultimately like it's, it's a big four-year chunk of your life and you want to make sure you come out of it having learned a lot of stuff and really having enjoyed it and met a lot of cool people. Um, so when I went to Yale for Bulldog Days, I remember um, in the dining hall, I had, I think it was like an hour and a half conversation over dinner with a, with a current student, um, I think he was a sophomore, who just happened to be sitting next to me eating dinner. And he answered literally every question I had. And by the end of the conversation, he mentioned that he had to leave and that he had a biology final the next day. So he had just taken an hour and a half of his time just to talk to a pre-frosh about um, pre-med at Yale and um, the academic environment. Um, and that just shows, like, not only how relaxed students are, but how um, collaborative they are. They always want to help, like, a fellow student. Um, and they want to do well, but only um, if um, their friends and are also going to be successful. Um, it's a very collaborative um, teamwork is a huge thing here. Um, and as a pre-med student, um, that's definitely the type of school I wanted to go to. Um, and it's exceeded my expectations. Um, it's been a wonderful experience so far. Uh, my freshman year has gone uh, tremendously. So um, definitely come to Bulldog Days, see it for yourself, um, and it'll be a great time. You'll really enjoy it. So thank you guys so much for um, tuning in and asking us your questions. Um, as 
all of us have said, you know, we can only tell you so much and we can give you our experiences, but the best way to see it is to really come see it for yourself. Um, so come to Bulldog Days. It's going to be an awesome time. We've got an awesome schedule of, of events lined up for you. Um, but more than that, I'd just like to get a sense of, of campus and feel what the vibe is because, uh, you know, our words can only do so much. So instead of taking our word for it, just come check it out for yourselves. Um, so, yeah, so enjoy the rest of your, your Sunday night. Um, pleasure to talk to all you guys, and um, see you at Bulldog Days.